All right, here we go. Volkanovsky and uh, Makachev, uh, part two coming up. That's what should have been on the books right off the bat, but I think that actually helps uh, uh, fight sometimes, not having that really big buildup. It's just like a flashpoint buildup right at the end. So we're going to jump in it right up with uh, Uncle Chill here. Roll with it. If you book one big fight, there's things that come from that. You know, by example, at 155 pounds, I love the idea. I love the idea of uh, folks stepping in. Now, uh, Makachev's wanting to go up to uh, 170 welterweight and, and uh, fight for that. So he's wanting to go up and and, and Volk's going up. Now, now Volk, he could put on size and go up to 170 at some point too if you if you really wanted, honestly. Uh, that, that dude's just like a little freaking uh, American bully, just like a cannonball running around destroying everything in its path. Uh, I mean, Volk could absolutely potentially be a three-division champion. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, Makachev, so Ma but Makachev is wanting to go up. Volk's wanting to go up, you know. Um, that seems to be the thing these days. Get that champ chant rolling. Getting the fight that he wanted. Getting the fight that he earned. Right? It was, it was, it was stated that if... When Volk and Islam got done the first time, it was stated, if we're going to rematch this, Volk needs to win his next fight, who was scheduled against Rodriguez. Uh, Islam needs to win his next Fuck. Here we go. Here we go. Getting it. We're getting it. Uh, Islam needs to win his next fight, which was rumored to be against Charles. That wasn't actually booked. I did everything I could do to have them not. My editing skills are non-existent, so I'm just kind of throwing this shit together. Roll with me here, guys. Not book that fight. At any rate. Volk did his part. Volk qualifies for Islam. Volk came out and did an interview about a month ago. He said, man, I'm not waiting. If I do the Islam gimmick, I, I gotta wait until April or May. Feels like I'm just rolling with chill. Let's do it. If next year, I want to fight right away. If I go to 45... Take on Elliot Tapori, we can do it right away. I'm telling you guys, I'm stating the obvious for you hardcore fans, but I, I want to give a timeline in case I'm talking to some new fans. So, yeah, man. Uh, and going into that fight, I really thought uh, uh, T Taporia had, and, and he did. Taporia is great. He had a real, he had a good chance of uh, beating uh, uh, Islam. I mean, not back then, maybe possibly in the future, but that just you know shows how how good but uh so so but but yeah roll with the chair to see Volk get this opportunity is great i would like to know how we got here because we went with Volk and we went with Gamron and there was no speaking of Gaethje so it was the fight off here we go all right So it was the fight offered to Gaethje, and he didn't want to. So they get a, they did Gamera dirty as hell, dude. You, you got him as the backup fighter, but as soon as something happens, they don't use him. You know? So the backup fighter deal is just optics, you know? Like, I would be totally pissed if I was Gamera. I would be up in arms right now if I was Gamera. On short notice, he wasn't ready to go. He didn't want to go to Fight Island. He didn't want to be a backup fighter. None of those things at all. I, I don't know. I'm just saying I, I would like to know. I think that would be good drama, good gossip. I, I would be curious how that happened. Because if you skipped Gaethje already, not just once, you skipped him twice. You went with Gamrot and you went with Bulk before you went to Gaethje. Why would we think that Gaethje is going to be next? How, how, how would that work? So as I'm trying to collect clues and get information, I, I'm just curious about that. Now what do you do with Taporia, by the way? Does he fight for an interim? Yep, Taporia's got to be pissed too. Does he fight Volk for the Undisputed belt? I mean, a lot of these things can't be decided until this fight is over. We don't know if Volk's going to win. If Volk becomes champion at 100... Hey, you speak for yourself. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, right up there in the uh, upper 90 percentage range that Volk is going to win this one. He was picking up steam in that last one. He, he was uh, figuring Islam out on the spot in that last one. And um, I think he's going to pick up right where he left off and just... Bulldog, argh, bulldog, right over that mother. 155 pounds. I think it's very unlikely that he ever returns to 145. 
Nobody wants to cut weight. Nobody wants to cut more weight than necessary. Is why I bring that to you. So, so, Taporia versus Volk is not guaranteed. And in many ways, it's more likely than not to happen. Now, you can have your own opinion on that. But keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind because that's an, an overlapping... We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll keep right. that in mind. Just keep that in mind because that's an, an overlapping theme when you look at 185 pounds. And again, I, I tried. I tried to let you know if you pass up an opportunity, you are very unlikely to get that opportunity again. And that has to do with 185 and Trick is Duplicy. As soon as he said no, right? As soon as that interview with Adesanya happened. There's a recent culture going on here and, and people dogging people. Oh, motherfucker, dude. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad, I'm okay. Yeah, um, I, I mean, if someone's injured, man, like, like, don't even give them shit. Like, look at TJ Dillashaw, dude. Like, coming in with the... Broke, broke ass shoulder, you know. Um, like as a fan, I want to see a, a fighter, you know, as close to a hundred percent as possible. Absolutely, I want to see a fighter as close to a hundred percent as possible. That way, there's no excuses. I don't want to hear no. Oh well, I came in with an injury, so that's why, you know, I would have done better. It's like fucking come in as good as you can possibly come in, and and I don't want to fucking hear about it when you lose, you know. And as soon as that interview with Adesanya happened and he started thinking twice about it and said, no, there was no guarantee. He was a number one contender, won a number one contender's match. But you have to hold them to it. It's your job now to scream from the rooftops that you were promised number one contendership and you expect that to be honored. Because as soon as Strickland goes in there with that opportunity and changes and shuffles the deck, you're very unlikely to get it. It was still possible because you're, you're 185 pounds. And 185 pounds, there's some really good fighters. But they are in. No. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there's some really good fighters, go. but they are interchangeable mediocrities. Um, you got Adesanya, who's one of the biggest stars in the sport. You I, I don't want to talk over you, chill. That would be rude. Um. Yeah, I'm still, dude. Izzy and Drickus is still right there, man. For me, it, that fight does not even need the belt on the line to be as exciting. It does not. As a fan, that fight is right there on the table, and that is the fight that I want to see next for both of them. We got it. We got to settle this. Who's the king of Africa? Shit, man. Who has now risen to that ascent, and then you have a whole bunch of guys that are really good at fighting. The white lion or the black tiger, motherfucker. In front of nobody. And the reason that's relevant is Duplisi was still a live dog. Like he was doing everything wrong, but when you're, but everybody else was doing it wrong too. So he was still a very live dog to get that opportunity. Now we're in a situation where we don't have to wonder anymore. It's not going to be Duplisi. Duplisi will get the call if and. Hey, Duplisi. <laughs> Duplisi is great, man. He's he's a wrecker. He he's just he. He's an annihilator. I like that about him. Just no fucks given. Get in. But he is juiced to the gills. That motherfucker is jacked. Only if there's injuries, there's illness. We need you at short notice. There's now another fight that's been named number one contendership. Not to mention wherever the rankings are and wherever you even find that out, there's no way that Drikas is in front of Adesanya. So even if there was a last minute or a backup fighter, you're going to be looking to Adesanya. So it's just one of these spots. And I don't take a pleasure in this, by the way. I'm not giving Drikis a hard time. I love watching Duplisi fight. You know what? Asanya's going to be all up in uh, this fight up here with uh, Volk and Islam getting thrashed, getting swayed out there in the crowd, having a good time. You need to just take some time off. You, have a good time, Izzy, man. But it's more realistic now than it was prior to the announcement of Kamara Usman versus Shemayev. It's more realistic now that Duplisi's and Izzy get matched up. I, I was a little light on that idea, even though it wouldn't be a title fight. If if Jariki said no, 
when the world title was on the line, I thought that it was a little bit ambitious to think that we could. Man, see, see, and, and here we go. It, it, it's like, uh, it, is saying no equal at all times? Like, it, it, no, J- Drickus was injured. Like, like, I'll reiterate, but as a fan, I don't want to see someone coming in. I know you're not going to be 100% as a fighter. You're always going to have some kind of injury, and, and you know, you got to judge that for yourself, how much injury it, it is enough to, to actually dampen your performance. And, and that's what it's all about is, you know, the best performance that you can put on. Present him with the exact same thing, minus the top prize of the belt, and still get him to say yes. Yeah. If you're not in a state where you can put on, you know, the closest to your, the best performance that you know that you can at that particular point, that then, you know, just step aside and let someone else who is at that, you know, state. Yes. So, it's a curious spot, and nothing in this sport is done until it's done. Nothing. I think this might be one of the finer lessons. One of the finer lessons anywhere. Kamara Usman fought tooth and nail to get Jemayev, and he got picked over. When wasn't him. He was told he could have it. They couldn't agree on the weight class. It wasn't him. But he stayed true to it. He knew what time it was. He stayed in shape. Might have kept his mouth shut. He might not have been as vocal as I'd like to see a guy be. But he was still able to see. Yeah, but, I mean... <laughs> The fine line there, right? Fine line. The board, and he was still able to see there was something off with Paulo Costa and Chimaev from Jump Street. That fight was never going to happen. Now, I mean, maybe that's how you felt about it, but that fight is going to happen. Uh, so, so the words that fight was never going to happen, that doesn't make sense to me. That Because as a fan, that fight has to happen. Because you could just tell when uh, uh, Hamzat rolled up in the, the P.I. and uh, Paulo was there with the broken hand. He was ready to throw down the broken hand. And he's, Paulo's serious now, too. He would throw down even, uh, you know, 70%. And um, as, I don't want to see that because you know you know Hamzat's 110%, you know. So you better be up there close to 100 for that motherfucker. Whoa, what a and who's to blame or whose side that was on? I can't, I can't really bring you that. Neither one of those guys wanted to fight each other. Neither one of those guys wanted that fight to happen. Kamar Usman was able to see that. He was able to see something's going to happen. My phone's going to ring. The idea that I brought them in the first place is the best idea. And eventually, I will prove it's the best idea. And when I prove it, when I call them, I don't get much for it. When I prove it because they're calling me, it's a great way to get a raise. <laughs> Lay it down, motherfucker. That's what I'm talking about. Right, all right, all right. Dark light and the bad guy. Here we go. This is my quarter million dollar set right here. Look at that. Quarter million dollars with the Hi, airheads right there. I'm Dr. Chris Taylor with Thousands Bladder and Bowel old. Institute. You Do bladder or bowel control problems keep you from going places or doing things that you like? Are you always looking for a restroom? Do you have to go too often during the day or Way have to wake often. up multiple times yeah, at night? Bullshit. Do you get a sudden or 